the hymn of creation excerpt by carl gustav jung translated by bertrice m hinkle from psychology of the unconscious published 1916 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the second chapter in Miss Miller's work is entitled Gloria Adieu Poem Onerique. When twenty years of age, Miss Miller took a long journey through Europe. We leave the description to her. After a long and rough journey from New York to Stockholm, from there to Petersburg and Odessa, I found it a true pleasure to leave the world of inhabited cities and to enter the world of waves sky and silence i stayed hours long on deck to dream stretched out in a reclining chair the histories legends and myths of the different countries which i saw in the distance came back to me indistinctly blended together in a sort of luminous mist in which things lost their reality while the dreams and thoughts alone took on somewhat the appearance of reality at first i even avoided all company and kept to myself lost wholly in my dreams where all that i knew of great beautiful and good came back into my consciousness with new strength and new life i also employed a great part of my time writing to my distant friends reading and sketching out short poems about the regions visited some of these poems were of a very serious character it may seem superfluous perhaps to enter intimately into all these details if we recall however the remark made above that when people let their unconscious speak they always tell us the most important things of their intimate selves then even the smallest detail appears to have meaning valuable personalities invariably tell us through their unconscious things that are generally valuable so that patient interest is rewarded miss miller describes here a state of introversion after the life of the cities with their many impressions had been absorbing her interest with that already discussed strength of suggestion which powerfully enforced the impression she breathed freely upon the ocean and after so many external impressions became engrossed wholly in the internal with intentional abstraction from the surroundings so that things lost their reality and dreams became truth we know from psychopathology that certain mental disturbances exist which are first manifested by the individuals shutting themselves off slowly more and more from reality and sinking into their fantasies during which process in proportion as the reality loses its hold the inner world gains in reality the determining power this process leads to a certain point which varies with the individual when the patient suddenly become more or less conscious of their separation from reality the event which then enters is the pathological excitation that is to say the patients begin to turn towards the environment with diseased views to be sure which however still represent the compensating although unsuccessful attempt at transference the methods of reaction are naturally very different i will not concern myself more closely with this here this type appears to be generally a psychological rule which holds good for all neurosis and therefore also for the normal in a much less degree we might therefore expect that miss miller after this energetic and persevering introversion which had even encroached for a time upon the feeling of reality would succumb anew to an impression of the real world and also to just as suggestive and energetic an influence as that of her dreams let us proceed with the narrative but as the journey drew to an end the ship's officers outdid themselves in kindness tout se coule a des plumes impresse et du plus amiable and i passed many amusing hours teaching them english 
on the sicilian coast in the harbour of catania i wrote a sailor's song which was very similar to a song well known on the sea brine wine and damsels fine the italians in general all sing very well and one of the officers who sang on deck during night watch had made a great impression upon me and had given me the idea of writing some words adapted to his melody soon after that i was very nearly obliged to reverse the well-known saying veder napoli e poi mourir that is to say suddenly i became very ill although not dangerously so i recovered to such an extent however that i could go on land to visit the sights of the city in a carriage this day tired me very much and since we had planned to see pisa the following day i went on board early in the evening and soon lay down to sleep without thinking of anything more serious than the beauty of the officers and the ugliness of the italian beggars one is somewhat disappointed at meeting here instead of the expected impression of reality rather a small intermezzo a flirtation nevertheless one of the officers the singer had made a great impression il maviat fait beaucoup the impression the remark at the close of the description son songer a rien de plume serio la la bouteille des officers and so on diminishes the seriousness of the impression it is true the assumption however that the impression openly influenced the mood very much is supported by the fact that a poem upon a subject of such an erotic character came forth immediately brine wine and damsels fine and in the singer's honor one is only too easily inclined to take such an impression lightly and one admits so gladly the statement of the participators when they represent everything as simple and not at all serious i dwell upon this impression at length because it is important to know that an erotic impression after such an introversion has a deep effect and is undervalued possibly by miss miller the suddenly passing sickness is obscure and needs a psychologic interpretation which cannot be touched upon here because of lack of data the phenomena now to be described can only be explained as arising from a disturbance which reached the very depths of her being from naples to livorno the ship travelled for a night during which i slept more or less well my sleep however is seldom deep or dreamless it seemed to me as if my mother's voice awakened me just at the end of the following dream at first i had a vague conception of the words when the morning stars sang together which were the preludium of a certain confused representation of creation and of the mighty quarrels resounding through the universe in spite of the strange contradictory and confused character which is peculiar to the dream there was mingled in it the chorus of an oratorio which had been given by one of the foremost musical societies of new york and with that were also memories of milton's paradise lost then from out of this world there slowly emerged certain words which arranged themselves into three strophes and indeed they seemed to be in my own handwriting on ordinary blue-lined writing paper on a page of my old poetry book which i always carried around with me in short they appeared to me exactly as some minutes later they were in reality in my book miss miller now wrote down the following poem which she arranged somewhat a few months later to make it more nearly in her opinion like the dream original when the eternal first made sound a myriad ears sprang out to hear and throughout all the universe there rolled an echo deep and clear all glory to the god of sound when the eternal first made light a myriad eyes sprang out to look and hearing ears and seeing eyes once more a mighty quarrel took all glory to the god of light when the eternal first gave love a myriad hearts sprang into life ears filled with music eyes with light pealed forth with hearts with love all rife all glory to the god of love 
before we enter upon miss miller's attempt to bring to light through her suppositions the root of this subliminal creation we will attempt a short analytic survey of the material already in our possession the impression on the ship has already been properly emphasized so that we need have no further difficulty in gaining possession of the dynamic process which brought about this poetical revelation it was made clear in the preceding paragraphs that miss miller possibly had not inconsiderably undervalued the importance of the erotic impression this assumption gains in probability through experience which shows that very generally relatively weak erotic impressions are greatly undervalued one can see this best in cases where those concerned either from social or moral grounds consider an erotic relation as something quite impossible for example parents and children brothers and sisters relations homosexual between older and younger men and so on if the impression is relatively slight then it does not exist at all for the participators if the impression is strong then a tragic dependence arises which may result in some great nonsense or be carried to any extent this lack of understanding can go unbelievably far mothers who see the first erections of the small son in their own bed a sister who half playfully embraces her brother a twenty-year-old daughter who still seats herself on her father's lap and then has strange sensations in her abdomen they are all morally indignant to the highest degree if one speaks of sexuality finally the whole education is carried on with the tacit agreement to know as little as possible of the erotic and to spread abroad the deepest ignorance in regard to it it is no wonder therefore that the judgment in puncto of the importance of an erotic impression is generally unsafe and inadequate miss miller was under the influence of a deep erotic impression as we have seen because of the sum total of the feelings aroused by this it does not seem that this impression was more than dimly realized for the dream had to contain a powerful repetition from analytic experience one knows that the early dreams which patients bring for analysis are none the less of a special interest because of the fact that they bring out criticisms and valuations of the physician's personality which previously would have been asked for directly in vain they enrich the conscious impression which the patient had of his physician and often concerning very important points they are naturally erotic observations which the unconscious was forced to make just because of the quite universal undervaluation and uncertain judgment of the relatively weak erotic impression in the drastic and hyperbolic manner of expression of the dream the impression often appears in almost unintelligible form on account of the immeasurable dimension of the symbol a further peculiarity which seems to rest upon the historic strata of the unconscious is this that an erotic impression to which conscious acknowledgment is denied usurps an earlier and discarded transference and expresses itself in that therefore it frequently happens for example that among young girls at the time of their first love remarkable difficulties develop in the capacity for erotic expression which may be reduced analytically to disturbances through a regressive attempt at resuscitation of the father image or the father imago indeed one might presume something similar in miss miller's case for the idea of the masculine creative deity is a derivation analytically and historically psychologic of the father imago and aims above all to replace the discarded infantile father transference in such a way that for the individual the passing from the narrow circle of the family into the wider circle of human society may be simpler or made easier
in the light of this reflection we can see in the poem and its preludium the religious poetically formed product of an introversion depending upon the surrogate of the father imago in spite of the incomplete apperception of the effectual impression essential component parts of this are included in the idea of compensation as marks so to speak of its origin feaster has coined for this the striking expression law of the return of the complex the effectual impression was that of the officer singing in the night watch when the morning stars sang together the idea of this opened a new world to the girl creation this creator has created tone then light and then love that the first to be created should have been tone can be made clear only individually for there is no cosmogony except the gnosis of hermes a generally quite unknown system which would have such tendencies but now we might venture a conjecture which is already apparent and which soon will be proven thoroughly namely the following chain of associations the singer the singing morning stars the god of tone the creator the god of light of the sun of the fire and of love the links of this chain are proven by the material with the exception of sun and fire which i put in parenthesis but which however will be proven through what follows in the further course of the analysis all of these expressions with one exception belong to erotic speech my god star light my son fire of love fiery love etc creator appears indistinct at first but becomes understandable through the reference to the undertone of eros to the vibrating chord of nature which attempts to renew itself in every pair of lovers and awaits the wonder of creation miss miller had taken pains to disclose the unconscious creation of her mind to her understanding and indeed through a procedure which agrees in principle with psychoanalysis and therefore leads to the same results as psychoanalysis but as usually happens with laymen and beginners miss miller because she had no knowledge of psychoanalysis left off at the thoughts which necessarily bring the deep complex lying at the bottom of it to light in an indirect that is to say censored manner more than this a simple method merely the carrying out of the thought to its conclusion is sufficient to discover the meaning miss miller finds it astonishing that her unconscious fantasy does not following the mosaic account of creation put light in the first place instead of tone end of hymn of creation excerpt by carl gustav jung translated by beatrice m hinkle from the psychology of the unconscious published in 1916